faith that produces works. The faith that produces works. Uh, when, uh, you know, when we use this title here, uh, the faith that produces work, works, it actually connotes that there is a faith that does not produce. All right? The unsaid here is that there is another faith which does not produce works. And so uh, for the next few minutes, I want to uh, look at the faith that produces works. Uh, you know, and we will be reading from the book of James, chapter 2, the entire uh, chapter, though I will not be able to read uh, because of the time. But let me encourage all of us that kindly go and read James chapter 2, the entire uh, uh, chapter, and you will get the discussion which James is putting across in this chapter. Uh, I know all of us know this. Uh, it's about faith without works is? Of course you know. So I'm not bringing anything new. I am just want us to remind ourselves in one or two things about the same. And so when we read in this chapter, we, we find two kinds of faith. And um, the, how I put it is that we have the inactive faith, uh, which I am calling it the dead faith, a faith that is dead, a faith which does not have works, and also, in this chapter, you will find a faith which is active. This is a faith which has works, and I'm calling it the faith, the, uh, the saving faith. It's a faith that can save. Amen? So, uh, at the introduction, we now know we have two kinds of, of faith. And those two kinds of faith uh, is, is, is domiciled in in all of us, you either possess one or the other of the same. Okay. And uh, let me now go to uh, the faith, uh, the, the faith, the inactive faith. That is the faith which does not have works. The faith which does not have works. I'll be reading po uh, portions of this uh, chapter. And so let's read uh, James chapter 2 and verses 14. And the word of the Lord says, uh, What good is it, my brothers? What good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to, be, to have faith but has no deeds? Um, you know, I like this chapter because, one, it is a chapter which uh, J uh, James puts a discourse uh, in, uh, as in his... Uh, is, is looking at the place of faith and the place of, uh, of works. Um, he, and so James begins by saying, what good is it? What good is it, my brothers? You know, and let me also add sisters. Uh, what good is it, my brothers and sisters, if a man claims to have faith and have got no deeds? When you read here, uh, James has, you know, a conversation. It's like he's talking to someone who is a prominent uh, propo uh, proponent of works, and he himself, uh, and, and there's another person who is a prominent proponent of faith and, uh, alone. And so James tells this congregation, and let me tell this wonderful congregation in Sitam, what good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith but has got no deeds? And let's look at the last part of this sentence. And he says, can such faith save him? Can such faith save him? You know, I like the logic. You know, this is something which uh, James is putting as facts and he's telling the people, please kindly interrogate this. Interrogate this. And so he says, what good? Actually, what he's saying here, 
there is a kind of faith that cannot save. All right? Can you look at me, please? What he's saying here is that there is a kind of faith which cannot save. It is truly a faith, but it cannot do what? It cannot save. And what James is saying in other words, it is a useless faith. It's a good for nothing faith. It is a faith that is not beneficial. And so this kind of faith, what James is saying, is useless. Can we say amen? amen? Ask your neighbor, what kind of faith do you possess? All right, don't get the answer. We will get the answer at the end of the sermon, okay? <laughs> so they, James says, can such faith save him? You know, what actually James is saying here is telling the people, let's not play games. Let's be serious with what you're doing. We are here, we are doing matters faith with a purpose that this faith should save us. And if this faith does not save us, then it's good for nothing. It is good for nothing. You know, you've come here because you have some kind of faith. You are here this afternoon because you have some kind of faith. So James is saying to the church, kindly interrogate the kind of faith that you have. And he tells them, if, what good is it, brothers, if a man claims to have faith, but he has got no deeds? This kind of faith which does not have works is a faith that cannot save. Can you write that on down? A faith which does not have corresponding works cannot save. Cannot save. And in the scriptures, we have such a kind of faith which James is talking about here. And this was exemplified or shown to us by Jesus himself, our Lord. And so in Matthew chapter 7, and verse 21 to 23, the word of the Lord says, this is Jesus speaking about this kind of faith, a faith which cannot save. But you know, it's active in people's hearts and lives. And so Matthew 7, 21 says, Jesus says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Faith should allow us to enter the kingdom of heaven. Faith should not be a means to a, to a church auditorium. It should be a means into heaven. So Jesus our Lord says, not Everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. I don't know what's the purpose of your faith. I don't know what's the purpose of your coming this afternoon here. I don't know what's the purpose of your being religious. Jesus says, not all that call me Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. The people who profess the Lord are people who have some kind or some type of faith. These are not atheists. These are not people who don't have any religious disposition. These are people who are religious. These are people who are committed to something. And so Jesus says, these people 
have faith. But Jesus says it is not a saving faith. They cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. Can we shout hallelujah? Can we say a bigger hallelujah? I don't know what's the purpose of your faith. Really. Let's interrogate ourselves before it's too late. Let's come alive in the name of Jesus. And I break every form of deception from hell in Jesus' name. Amen. Satan is a liar. He deceives us. He's a deceiver. And look at how he's deceived so many people. They say they claim to our faith. But it's a kind of faith which James says it's useless. It's good for nothing. It cannot save. And so James says, can such a faith save him? James is beating these people. He's wondering aloud. And he's writing and he's wondering, can such a faith really produce or give entry into the kingdom of heaven? And so Jesus talks about these people who have this kind of faith. And he says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, we, we, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Are you listening to that? How many of us have ever prophesied here before? Now, these are people who are in a different level, my friends. These are people who are operating in a particular dimension. We prophesied in your name. We have cast out demons in your name. And look at this. And I've done many wonders in your name. And I've done many wonders in your name. Now, this kind of faith is not devoid of actions. It has some actions. They have done what? They have cast the demons. They have prophesied. They have done many wonders in the name of the Lord. Can you shout hallelujah? You know, it's so interesting. You know, Senior told me when we are, we are done with the first service, you know, this is a message for us pastors. And it's true. It's for us. These are people who are operating in some realm. Can we say hallelujah? People can just speak in tongues and prophesy. And all of you just line up here. And Prasaki Prophet you receive. And you are just going like that. Can you say amen? amen. Do you know that one does not qualify me to go to heaven? Are listening to me? My being a pastor does not qualify me to go heaven to heaven. Do you know what? You coming to church does not qualify you to go into heaven. Verses 23 says, and then and then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. King James says, you doers of iniquity. Please kindly underline that in your heart. There is a kind of faith that can produce miracles, but cannot save you. There is a kind of faith that can raise the dead, but it cannot take you into heaven. There is a faith that can bring you to church, but it cannot take you to heaven. There is a faith that can make you sign up in a ministry, 
but it cannot take you into heaven. My children, there's a faith that can bring you to Sunday school, but it cannot take you to heaven. And there is a faith which James, in thinking aloud while writing, he said, can such a faith really save him? I really also wonder if such a faith can save you. Let me say this. Miracles are not the fruits of our lives, but the fruit of our faith. Kindly, please, you can write that one down. You know, I said in the morning, you can retweet it free of charge. You can even just own it, and it becomes your statement. Faith is not the fruit of our lives. No, sorry. Miracles actually are the fruit of faith. Miracles, or faith produces miracles. That's what I can say. Faith produces what? Miracles. But the fruit of our lives is not from faith that you have. It is from your character. I was looking at this. If you abide in me, you will bear much. That is Jesus. He's saying you are the branches. If you abide in the branch, you will bear the fruit. What is the fruit of the tree? It is the character, it's the gene, it is the genetics that the tree has is born by the branches. You know what God is saying? The fruit that he wants us to bear is to bear his image and his character. No, some of us like, brother, you will be prosperous. You will be fruitful in your place of work. You will rise. You will become a director. Really? Is that the biggest thing you are looking for in life? I'm pity, I pity you. Huh? If all you want is a great name. Serious? Great name? How, 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 how long will that last? Even if I ever become, I don't know who, let me say the governor of uh, was in Gishu. Will I forever be the governor? No. That is so temporal. So Jesus is talking about character here. So these people had great faith. They could do miracles. But the Bible says their character was lawlessness. They were doers of iniquity. Now let me come to the saving faith. The faith that is active. The faith that has action. And as I introduce this other second type of faith, I want us to read James chapter 2 and verse 19. All right? And as I read this, I want to tell you, Satan also has got faith. You have not done much by thinking that uh, you, you know, you are a religious person. Satan has faith, but the kind of faith which Satan has is not a saving faith. This faith cannot save Satan. And so James 2, 19 says, you believe that there is one God and James writes and says, can we say it? Can we say it again? You believe that there is one God and that is? That is good. But it's not good enough. Are you listening to me? It's not great. And James says, even demons believe and they do what? They shudder. 
<laughs> and I put my own word there. Demons are religious too. Can you say hallelujah? <laughs> Can you say hallelujah? Demons are religious too. You know, some of us think by coming to church, you'll go to heaven. How? By being religious, just praying for food, you think you'll go to heaven. Who told you that? Who deceived you? Demons are religious too. They have a kind of faith. But will demons get saved? No. Because the kind of faith they have is not a saving faith. Are we together? You know, some of us think that our small religious things can save us. They, they won't save you. And I said in the morning, you people don't underestimate Satan. He's better than you. And now you're saying, Pastor, really? Am I worse than Satan? So what am I? Don't think Satan is not religious. He is, and a better one in that case. Now let me ask you, have you ever seen God? Have you ever seen God? Satan has seen him. Now you come from your village, wherever. Do you know the village of Satan? Where did he come from? From heaven. So he's better than the other now. Now you guys, have you ever spoken to God face to face? Have you ever done that? But do you know what? Satan talks to God face to face. Now who is better religious than the other one? Bro, will Satan get saved? No. And that is why some of us, we get a small vision and you now think you've gone to heaven. Who lied to you? Satan himself goes there in the evening and he has a chat with God. They talk about matters, the world. You remember the day he appeared before God? Yeah? And, uh, you know, God asked Satan, where are you from? And he said, oh man, you don't know? I just come from my usual business. What is his business? Roaming here and there in the world. And uh, they have a discussion and they say, you are moving around. Did you see a man called Job? <laughs> and Satan said, hey guy, I know that man. And then God says, have you ever seen any like him? And uh, you know, that is the problem of, jo of Job. That's where the problems of Job began. So don't think by your coming to church you think you've achieved much. You've not. Have you gone to, you know, is, is it a melder synonymous to coming to the presence of God himself? And now you are fooling yourself. You say, I'll go to heaven. How? Now, I want you to become better than Satan. Can you say amen? amen. I want you to become better than Satan. Say amen. amen. I want you to come out of, from this level of having a faith that, that cannot save. And you move to the faith that saves. Now, let me say this. The reason why Satan cannot be saved as much he's so religious, as much as he's better than us, he can appear before God in person. There's something that disqualifies Satan from being saved. It is his works. He has a faith that cannot save. What, has he, what are his works? Sinful. Sin separates us from God. And that is the problem with the false prophets. They were able to prophesy, but they were sinful. You can come to see the Meldoret and you are sinful. Will such a faith save you? No. 
Please know it cannot save you. You think you've achieved so much by getting baptized? Great, but it cannot save you. Ladies and gentlemen, the faith that saves us these characteristics as I bring this to a close. One, it is amazed at the character and the wonder of God's holiness and righteousness. For you to just interrogate what kind of faith you possess. What is that thing that brings you into the house of God? Is it about the wonderful holiness of God or the great works of God? So a faith that saves wonders and looks at the glorious holiness of God. Isaiah looks, gets a gaze of heaven. He looks God and gets at what Isaiah looks. He looks and says, look, he's such a holy God. I cannot match him. He is holy and right and righteous. A faith that saves will always look at the holiness of God and is reflected in us and it will move us to say, oh, to me, a man of unclean lips. If the faith you possess does not tell you that, kindly interrogate it. Second, it appreciates the depravity of the human soul and turns to God in genuine repentance. A faith that saves appreciates the depravity of the human soul. Paul the Apostle writes and says, what a wretched man I am. What a wretched person I am. Who will rescue me? It is not a faith that tells you you have achieved. It is not a faith that tells you you have arrived. It is a faith that tells you you are wretched. It is a faith that tells you you need salvation. It is a faith that tells you you've not arrived, but it rather tells you, you forgetting the things that are gone and you stretch forth for the price ahead. That is the faith that saves. Fourth characteristic of a saving faith, it continually submits and seeks to do the will of God. This faith will always tell us, submit. It submits to the will of God. It is not about your will. It is not about your position. It is not about yourself. It's about God. And you submit to his will and you seek to do his will. That is what Jesus said about the false prophets. But he said those who enter heaven are they that do the will of God. My brothers and sisters, let's go out there and do the will of God regardless the position and the attitudes and the stance of the people around us there. Let's stand out and be counted and say I will stand on the Lord's side. The other characteristic is that it is demonstrated by good and moral, good, by good moral and social actions. James says, the faith that saves is demonstrated by good moral and social actions. The faith that saves will make us kind. The same faith that saves will make us merciful. Are we together? The faith that saves tells you don't hate your brother. The faith that saves will tell you do not be boastful or proud. 
The faith that saves is not self-centered. It's not self-centered. You don't seek your own. You seek the good of other people. The faith that saves does not tell you, go to be celebrated. No, the faith that saves will tell you, you don't deserve this. It belongs to God. And finally, the faith that saves is based on the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 10, 17 says, consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. The faith that saved is based on the word of Christ. It is not built on anything else. It is built on the Lord. Romans 10, 9 says that if we confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That is the faith that saved. It is built on the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, some of us really, Christ is, is among the others. Christ is not Lord. Christ is, you know, Christ is one of the ways. The faith that saves understands and appreciates that there is no salvation except through Jesus Christ. That is the faith that saves. The faith that saves is never based on anything else but on the Lord Jesus Christ. And in conclusion, brethren, the Lord is calling us to humble ourselves before him. The faith that saves humbles itself before the Lord. It's not boastful. It looks at the wretchedness of our lives. It looks at the depravity of our lives and seeks forgiveness and seeks repentance. A faith that saves is repentant. You cannot continue in sin. You cannot continue in wickedness and expect to be saved. Please, you cannot be continuing wickedness in your family. You know, you are terrorizing people. You are beating people. You are fighting. You are doing all sorts of wickedness. You cannot be doing all evil in your places of work and expect to be saved. The Bible says, let's humble ourselves before the Lord so that he may lift us up. It is by grace that we are saved through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Let's be upstanding.